a young boy who breaks the rules and gets in a little too much trouble with his best friend. A pair of love-struck teenagers who want to be together, even though the people closest to them don't approve. A teenager who doesn't feel like he fits in at home, at school, anywhere. If you thought these stories might be describing some up-and-coming books or movies, you'd be wrong. In fact, they're actually classic works of literature, some a few hundred years old. But if any of these descriptions reminded you of yourself or a friend, then you've made a connection, and that's this week's reading strategy. What is connecting? This week, we're going to focus on the different ways our brain connects to what we read. To connect means to find ways to relate the text to myself, other texts, and the world around me. As we read, we make connections when we take new information and connect it to our prior knowledge. We link ideas together. Sometimes we'll see similarities between the two, and other times we'll see differences. Either way, we are making a connection. We can make connections in a lot of different ways and to a lot of different things. Sometimes the easiest type of connection is a text-to-self connection. This is when you relate what you're reading to your own life, to your family or friends, or to something that happened to you or someone you know personally. Another type of connection we're going to talk about is a text-to-world connection. This is when you relate what you're reading to the world around you. You make connections to events, people, or places that exist in the real world. Text-to-self and text-to-world connections can sometimes be confusing because they are both based on real people, places, and situations. Just remember that if it happened to you or someone you personally know, it's text-to-self. If you heard about it through the media, newspapers, or word of mouth, but it didn't happen to you or someone you know personally, then it's text-to-world. The last type of connection is a text-to-text connection. This is when you relate what you're reading to something else that you've read. It could be to another character, story, or situation that you read in a book, magazine, newspaper, poem, or even a movie. As you read this year, you'll build your prior knowledge, so you should find that text-to-text connections are easier to make each time you read. Why is connecting important? Connections are important because they play a big role in creating our memory. Our memory is made from a network of ideas called schema. Think of schema like a big spider web in our brain. When we make a connection, we are taking a new idea and adding it to our schema. We attach the new information to the web that already exists, which makes it easier for us to understand and remember it. If you're the type of reader that needs help remembering details or what a text said, making connections can greatly help improve your ability to remember. Just like adding more links makes a longer chain, making more connections creates a stronger memory. The more we add to it, the bigger it gets. How do we make quality connections? You can make a connection to what you're reading by asking yourself, what does this remind me of? Look for ways that what you're reading is both similar to and different from other things that you already know. To make a connection even stronger, you should be able to explain why you are making that connection. You can do this by simply adding the word because to your connection. Instead of saying, this character reminds me of my teacher, you would say, this character reminds me of my teacher because they're both really funny or really smart. In the beginning though, if you're having trouble making connections, you might need to train your brain how to connect. So here are some sentence starters that can help get you started. That reminds me of because This is like, because. This is different from, because. I can relate to, because. I remember when, an experience I've had like that is, 
because this character or person makes me think of because I felt like that character when because I know this happens in the world when this setting or event or situation is similar to because since connections link new information to prior knowledge the more prior knowledge you have the easier it will be to connect as a result the more experiences you have the more texts you read and the more you learn about what's happening in the world around you the more connections you'll be able to make so you should work on making connections to what you're reading every time you read what are some examples Now that we have a good idea of what connecting is, why it's important, and how to use it, let's take a look at some examples. Look at the summary for the book Roomies by Sarah Zar and Tara Altabrando and see if we can make any connections. It's time to meet your new roomie. When Elizabeth receives her freshman year roommate assignment, she shoots off an email to coordinate the basics. Television, microwave, mini fridge. That first note to Lauren sparks a series of emails that alters the landscape of each girl's summer. As the countdown to college begins, life at home becomes increasingly complex for both of them. Family relationships and childhood friendships are strained by change, and Elizabeth and Lauren find themselves relying more and more on each other, even though they've never met. Ask yourself, what does this remind me of? Now, I'm sure many of you might be thinking that you're still a long way from going off to college or that you've never had to share a room with someone you don't know. But dig a little deeper. Do you remember how you felt before you started at a new school? Maybe you can relate to feeling nervous or excited or scared or sad. Have you ever had to make new friends? Maybe it was really easy for you like in this book. Or maybe it was really hard and nothing like in this book. Have you ever been in a situation where your relationships with family members or old friends have changed? Maybe it made some relationships more complicated. Maybe you had to work harder. Or maybe it made those relationships easier. If you practiced answering any of those questions, then you practiced making a connection. Let's try again. You're reading about genetics in a biology textbook. It says, Parents pass certain traits onto their offspring through genes. Certain genes are more heritable than others. For example, parents who carry the gene for dimples, small indentations on one or both cheeks, tend to have children with dimples. In another example, genes for hair texture pass between parent and child and determine whether the offspring will have straight, curly, or wavy hair. This would be a good time to stop and think about what text-to-self connections you can make. What genes did you inherit? If you thought about what color eyes you have, what color hair you have, even what color skin you have, or how tall you are, then you made a text-to-self connection to this text. Recap. Connecting means to find ways to relate the text to myself, other texts, and the world around me. We can make text-to-self, text-to-text, or text-to-world connections by tying new information to the prior knowledge that already exists in our schema. Connecting is how our brain remembers information, so we need to make connections every time we read by asking, what does this remind me of? That wraps up our flipped lesson on connecting. If you have any questions about this strategy, feel free to watch all or part of the video again or ask your teacher when you return to class. Click the link in the description box below to access a Google form for this lesson.